for some reason while writing code people think only about happy path. This is why in this video in less than 10 minutes you will learn how to handle your errors in JavaScript. And to make our code unbreakable we need to think in more pessimistic way. How can our code be broken? What will happen if we don't get enough parameters? Let's check on the example. As you can see here we have a variable backend data, which means we are getting some data from our server. And here we are using JSON parse to parse our backend data and create user that we will use later inside JavaScript. And the main problem with this code is that we assume that everything will be fine, that JSON that we are getting from backend will be valid always. But actually if we will open browser you can see that we are getting an error unexpected token in our JSON, which actually means that our JSON can be invalid. And this is completely fine, we just need to structure our code in a way that it won't break with exceptions. This is why here we must wrap our code with try catch. And actually try catch construction is exactly what help us to catch our errors. So inside try we are writing some problematic block. For example, when we are doing JSON parse, I highly recommend you to always wrap it in try catch. In this case, if we have some error, we will jump to our catch block. And here let's write for example console log catch and here we have our error. Let's check this out, I am reloading the page, we are getting the same error. But now it is an error that we can handle on our own. As you can see it's not red anymore, it is grey, which means this is just a console log inside our error. So we can change now this code to make it robust. This is why I want to create our user property before and here we try to parse our JSON and write the result inside user. Inside catch we can say that our user will be null, because in this case we understand ok we can't parse our JSON from the backend, which means we don't have any user. And here we can now console log our user. And if it will be parsed correctly then here we will get data of user, if not we will get null. As you can see in browser now we are getting null because our JSON is invalid. So I highly recommend you to wrap things like JSON parsing for example or working with a sync await in try catch construction always. One more addition to our code is finally, and actually not a lot of people are using it. Here after catch we can write here finally. And the main purpose of finally is that this code will be executed in any case. So here we can write I happen always. And as you can see now in browser this code will be happening, doesn't matter if try was successful or we are inside catch. So actually here inside finally we want to write our code that in other case we must duplicate. For example if you are setting some property in both try and inside catch it makes sense to move this code inside finally. In this case we avoid duplicating of this code. One more thing that people are not doing enough inside their code is throwing errors. For example let's say that we have a function update user and we know that to update a user we need the id of the user and some data. And here inside we are doing some logic. The main point is that anybody can just use this function without passing correct data inside. This is why at least we must check that both parameters were passed inside. If not then our function can't really do anything. This is why we can simply write here that if we don't have id or we don't have data then we want to throw an error. And to throw an error we have a keyword throw and then just a string for example params are not correct. And the most important part that you should not even write here in what function you have a problem. Now when I am reloading the page as you can see we don't have any errors. But now let's try to call update user without any parameters. As you can see in browser we have now an error and it is uncaught because we didn't wrap it in try catch. The main point is here that if some person is using our function and didn't provide correct parameters he is getting params are not correct. And he can open the stack trace here and see in what function the problem is happening. Then after this normally he will click on this function and see what is the problem. And he will understand ok I didn't pass our parameters correctly. As you can see it is extremely important to write your code in a more pessimistic way. Then you are ready to the errors before they are happening. Also if you want to debug your JavaScript code better, make sure that you check my 5 hints of debugging JavaScript in this video.